Today, I want you to pay attention to what the Indian foreign minister has to say about the British. Listen and tell me what you think. The world is still significantly Western in terms of its intellectual uh, uh, concepts, traditions and construct. When we say Western, a large part of it is actually British. British actually have put themselves to be successors of Greeks and Romans. They made themselves the inheritors and thereafter the propagators and clearly the beneficiaries. He's been very vocal about this from inception. The world, as my first point was made, is still significantly Western in terms of its intellectual uh, uh, concepts, traditions and construct. And when we say Western, a large part of it is actually British because uh, in the last 250 years, among the Western powers, uh, actually uh, the British in many ways, uh, purely uh, in some way derived from the fact that they were the most extensive empire, they have actually shaped uh, the, uh, the great debates and the uh, conversations. Now, interestingly, if you look at the way, uh, you know, thoughts in history, political science, international relations are unfolded. Uh, Westerners generally and the British actually have put themselves to be successors of Greeks and Romans. That they have actually worked history backwards. I mean, if you, if you think of Romans and Britain, actually the history is very different. It wasn't exactly a successor's history. Yet, once uh, actually empire building exercise started and then you needed legitimacy, you needed justification, you need narrative, you needed a rationalization. They created this, this whole, uh, I would say, legacy uh, of uh, wisdom and knowledge and thought and philosophy of which, of course, they made themselves the inheritors and thereafter the propagators and clearly the beneficiaries. But it wasn't just about themselves. If you look at how actually the relationship between geopolitics and uh, again uh, historical assumptions. You know, you have, it's, it's, it's very interesting comparison. How world history and I would say more than history, international relations, the comparative treatment of China and India. Uh, some of you would be familiar with Kissinger's book on China. The standard Western, even, I mean, we are now talking professors, intellectuals, practitioners. They have no problem accepting 5,000 years of unbroken Chinese history. And yet many of them, again, thanks to the British interest in propagating it at that time and the larger Western buy-in as well to that, they would not give that same privilege to or India. that same understanding to India. In fact, the extreme example of that was Churchill himself who said India is no more a country than the equator. Hmm. Oh, that's everything. Oh, that was very, very brief. Um, I would like to see the entirety of that one. I thought it was going to get into like the real thing. But anyways, I think I understand where he's coming from. Um, a lot of people are, should I say, trying to dissociate from the systems that seem to have been established by colonization. Um, this um, man in the Senate in Ghana was speaking about the same thing. Said Africa has to redefine what democracy is to Africa and not necessarily follow what democracy or the democratic system that was given to them or that, that they might have adopted from the Western nations. Um, I feel like that was where he was headed with this speech. I don't know, but it was an interesting one.
anyways let me know what you think share your thoughts on that it's an open discussion again so feel free to talk to us about anything smash that like button subscribe and i'll see you on the next one peace